Forage and photo crops feed the animals that support nearly a third of the world's population. As markets for animal products grow, demand for these animal food plants is escalating. Yet rapidly increasing human and livestock populations are generating urban expansion and pollution. Competition for land means less is left for grazing and soil fertility is dropping. Faced with today's large-scale, fast-moving environmental challenges, many foda and forages are dying out. Not only do these plants need to be saved quickly, but the genetic materials that they contain need to be explored. A major focus of the Ilri Gene Bank is the research and use of the precious genes inside its forage and photo collections work that is increasingly important as new pressures are felt in developing countries. The need for livestock feeds is intensifying, especially in urban areas where demand for animal products is high and rising. Population growth, industrialization and expanding market demands mean many remaining grazing areas are struggling Natural pastures are losing quality and becoming unable to feed the increasing numbers of animals that poor farmers need to keep. Expanding human populations in poor countries have resulted in many farms being divided up. So with each new generation the food and feed needed for the family must be produced on less land. You can see all this land belongs to our great-grandfathers. Like 20 acres from there, with six sons had to share equal portions. Now we are three boys, and each one of us has to get a piece of it, one acre or even a quarter half of it, and that goes on. In the small-scale dairy sector, the result has been that many farmers have got rid of hardy indigenous animals and bought exotic cows that give more milk and so make more money, but need more and higher quality feed. One of the biggest problems in sub-Saharan Africa and in most developing countries is that the available feed is extremely low nutritive quality and there are also feeding gaps through the year. That's why napier grass has become so important as a supplementary feed source particularly for crossbred animals for dairy. We use napier grass because it's nutritious for the cows and it's also high producing, so it's uh, a cheaper form of fodder. If I did not have the napier grass on the farm, probably my cows would starve. <laughs> napier, which originates from sub-Saharan Africa, has allowed much of the dairy industry in countries such as Kenya to survive on zero grazing where cattle have no access to pasture but are kept in stalls on small plots and fed on photo crops. 80% of milk on sale in Kenya is produced by smallholders, for whom napia is the most important feed crop. However, over the last 20 years, two major diseases have hit the napia that supplies this developing dairy sector probably as a byproduct of the much needed intensification of napier farming. Outbreaks of these diseases, called napier stunt and napier smut, hold back plant growth, so cows are poorly fed, causing rapid income loss among people 
who are already on the border of poverty. The characterization of the diversity of Napia and other foda and forage crops is therefore one of the vital pieces of research that the Ilri Gene Bank is working on. Through international partnerships, better adapted and resistant varieties that can be used around the world are being identified. We have been collaborating a lot with the International Livestock Research Institute, especially in the area of Napier head mouth disease. We have managed to identify two Napier grass varieties found in the Addis Gene Bank, originally from Swaziland and from Zimbabwe to address the problem we have in central Kenya. We know there are maybe more than 600,000 farmers who depend on Napier for their daily production. Although resistant to smut, these lines are not as productive as others used by farmers. Also, Napier propagation is not done by seeds, but by dividing and planting stems. This has allowed a limited number of varieties of Napier to be used widely, so an onset of new diseases might wipe out existing stocks. Research is therefore continuing to find other resistant types with better biomass production. While we are trying to solve the problem, it is important that we bring in the other grasses to stop the spread of disease. That's how the gene bank is very important, because if we do not have a gene bank, where would we go and look for the new plants? Brachyria looks very promising because it is now commercially available, so the amount of seed we will need will not be a limiting factor. Forage germplasm collected in one part of the world can impact livestock production in other continents. Brachyria, originally an African species, is a popular forage in Latin America and Asia and already supports beef production on over 70 million hectares in Brazil. Brachyria is a good forage crop because it is of high quality. It is suited for a wide range of climates. It is adapted to poor soils, drought and water logging. INRI and multiple other institutions have participated in the general collection conservation of this species. An ongoing partnership with SIAT, the Centro Internacional de Agricultura Tropical in Colombia, is focused on finding strains from southern and eastern Africa that are most insect and disease tolerant. But this is just one of the Ilri Gene Bank's many projects. Similar work focuses on a range of other foda and forage crops. So far, over 60 forages out of the gene bank's in-trust collection of 18,000 have been identified as having useful traits for farmers. Ilri is producing seeds to make them available for partners and farmers to use to grow forages to mitigate feed shortages. Every year, over 2,000 samples of seeds are distributed worldwide for forage research and development. We are testing different Desmodium species, which we initially got from Ilri, a germplasm bank. Uh, we are trying to see their disease suppression abilities. There are about uh, more than 10,000 farmers uh, who are now doing the push-pull technology. And farmers are doubling the yield, uh, producing the nipia grass and Desmodium for the cattle. I'm my widow. I have a family of five and three cows. I started growing this modian because it chases away the stem borer infection from the maize. 
At the same time, it is of much use to my animals. Before, I used to waste a lot of money buying napier for my cows and maize for my family. The Eulry germplasm or propagatable plant material is also used for gene discovery. This is the time-consuming scientific process necessary to assess and isolate the important genes inside plants. The science behind the characterization of these foda and forage crops is labor-intensive. So much of the Eulry collection still awaits gene discovery. But the need for plants resistant to drought, disease, flooding or temperature extremes is growing. And the stored seeds can supply many answers. Fodder crops are effectively a buffer to deal with feed deficits in, in harsh times in smallholder systems. We still don't know how climate will really affect the different environments. Conservation of, of genetic diversity in, in crops is extremely important. Both developed and developing countries are vulnerable to disasters which threaten the food needs of their livestock. The gene bank's library of possible solutions could be invaluable to their futures. The great resource in the gene bank in Addis could be linked to the new laboratory facilities being built in Nairobi. This offers the opportunity to use modern molecular techniques to better characterize the accessions in the gene bank and look for useful traits. For example, many of the accessions are grasses, and if one can find grasses which have this uh, trait for drought tolerance, that could be used even in breeding with not only fodder crops, but even with uh, crops such as maize and sorghum. Rich and poor will all continue to need forage crops. But, faced with today's large-scale, fast-moving environmental challenges, they also need networks of dedicated gene banks and their scientists. In Brazil, we have different biomes that imply that you must have different kinds of forages well adapted to each of them. That's why having a gene bank such as URIS is so important, not only for a country like Brazil, but for the whole world, in order to improve the sustainability and therefore providing more food for people. ILRI and its international partners will continue to work together towards a greater understanding and application of the biologically diverse treasures of the world's planned genetic inheritance.